In this tutorial, you'll learn how to set up Bootstrap 5 with HTML and CSS and a live server for auto refresh. Okay, so I have opened up my code editor here and I have opened a folder here. That's how it works with Visual Studio Code. So the first file I'm gonna create is an HTML file. Every website, no matter how complicated, starts with HTML. And here I can type HTML and if I uh, pick the second suggestion here, I get a boilerplate. So we'll change this in a second. I'm also gonna create my own custom style sheet because the thing with Bootstrap is it doesn't cover 100% of the things that you want to do. So sometimes you need to write your own custom styles. That's why it's super important that you have mastered CSS itself, right? So you need to know Flexbox, animations and transitions, for example, all these things, you have to learn them, you know, in, in plain CSS first, in my opinion. And then you can learn an abstraction like Bootstrap. And learning the abstraction will be very easy because you know how things work under the hood, right? So make sure you check out my professional CSS course. The link is in the description, right? So now in HTML, we do need to link to this uh, style sheet here. Otherwise the browser won't know that it exists. Okay, I'm gonna call this something like uh, Aurora Tours, right? We can imagine this is a fictional company offering tours to where you can see Aur Auroras. Not sure how to pronounce that. Right, so Aurora Tours uh, travel with us. I'm gonna right click here and open it with Live Server. This is an extension in Visual Studio Code and it will make sure that whenever you make a change in the HTML or CSS, that it automatically updates the page so that you don't have to refresh all the time. Okay, so now we have an empty uh, page. Let's see. So I wanna start uh, with Bootstrap. Now, before we can even start that, we need to make sure that it's actually included in our HTML. I'm gonna close the sidebar here. So you can go to the Bootstrap website. You can search for Bootstrap or Bootstrap Docs. Now, when you do this, you have to be careful because there's a bunch of different links here. The first link that I'm getting here actually links to an older version, 4.1. I'm actually gonna use 5.2, but here you have 5.0, for example. So that's also something that you wanna pay attention to. So this is actually the website I want. It also looks different from the other versions. And and here they also show you how to include it via, via CDN, right? So we've discussed the other uh, way of doing it. You can change the source files like that. You can change their variables and things like that, which is not gonna be necessary here. This is for the CSS. However, some components like the, uh, well, modal, for example, here, when you click on the button and you open the modal, the accordion uh, component, they have, right? They react to clicks. So Bootstrap needs to be able to access the, the click event with JavaScript and then do something. So we need to include JavaScript here as well. Now, when you include JavaScript, um, you can do it at the end of the body or you can do it um, in the head these days. But when you do it like this, you do have to include the defer attribute for, uh, well, that's simply optimal. So be careful um, with just putting a script in here, linking to an external uh, script because it will block parsing the rest of the page, except if you include defer here, right? So now we have both parts of Bootstrap. Now, very quickly, you may be wondering why do we have this weird integrity? Well, this integrity is basically a hash of um, what the content should be, right? So the browser is gonna make a network request to get this style sheet here, right? But this server may be hacked. And when the browser, you know, tries to get the content there, it may send something malicious back, right? So here with this integrity attribute, the browser will only apply it if this, this is a hash, if the hash of what we get back is the same as this hash, right? A little bit complicated, but it's basically a security mechanism. Same goes for cross origins, also for security. We don't wanna send any uh, cookies or like uh, identifiers to um, that server when we make that request, right? That's what that means. Not really important. Most developers don't know what it is, so don't worry. But maybe you were wondering about that. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level because in there we will build some beautiful real world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master css or javascript and i will also release other courses soon like react and node.js so if you want to be notified then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter you can find the link in the description thanks for watching and i hope to see you soon